basically it is an autonomous robot uh, modeled after Zeppelin flying his school. Um, so what you're looking at is uh, a microcontroller, which is like a very tiny computer, which programs. Um, and that controls uh, motors and sound and lights and um, sensors. So it gets a little feedback about sort of its situation around it and if it's hitting anything, that kind of thing. Um, and so basically what it does is it flips around and tries not to hurt itself or to get caught um, in corners or smashing into walls. Um, and then when it feels like it's safe, it will either sing a little song or do like a little dance performance. What <laughs> 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 it looks like. That's basically what it's like. Is it feeling safe right now? What's up? Is it feeling yeah. safe? Right now? It's blinking its light, so it's feeling safe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the LEDs are like a little code for me, basically, so I know what it's doing. And you don't. And I'm not going to tell you what it's doing. But you can make guesses and figure it out for me today if, if you observe its behavior. Um, and it is uh, touch sensitive also. So the, the metallicized envelope itself, oh, I should mention, um, the balloon I made myself. And it's made out of metallicized nylon, which is a material that you can work with with just your household iron at home, which is really easy and cool. So you can just make your own balloons at home very simply um, and for relatively inexpensive. And um, then you just fill it with helium. <laughs> so, there it goes. <laughs> check you out. So it does, in fact, have a mind of its own. Um, there's no controller. Uh, it had a partner in crime, but the partner died last week. Oh. Was it sad? It was all its own. It was very sad. It cried a little bit. Stop drinking for a week. So, are there any questions? Yo, what inspired you? What inspired this? Like, um, were you like, I'm going to make a robot? Or? Well, I've been working with electronics for a while, and um, it was kind of a challenge to myself. Uh, to try to construct the most difficult robot I could think of um, that didn't involve going underwater. So the, the big challenge with making something that can fly is that it has to be really light. So there's a lot of um, sensors and you know different types of electronic apparatus that are just too heavy, especially batteries. It's something we don't normally think about as being heavy. The batteries are extremely heavy for a robot that weighs a couple ounces total. Um, so that was the biggest challenge of it. And, and basically, I put the project on as a challenge. Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have batteries on there, then? Yes, there are two. There's a really great battery, which is a lithium polymer battery. And that runs the motors. And lithium polymer batteries are great because they can source a lot of current right away. Is it on yet? for names still. I've been asking people what they think because I'm sometimes it's hard to think of a name when you're so close to something. <laughs> you know, it's like who wants to name their own baby, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if you have thoughts on names, feel free to share them. Have you thought about getting it to respond to sound too? Um, kind of like a clapper kind of a I wouldn't want to make a clap.
Clapper. Thank you so much. Um, responding to sales is, a, is an interesting question. It's kind of complex. Um, to achieve interaction with sound beyond Clapper kind of thing, it's, pr it's pretty processing intensive. Um, and is not necessarily relevant to a project like this. Um, what I am thinking about is making it more increasingly touch sensitive yeah. so that you can respond more to the presence of objects and people in the room and what, and also possibly um, creating an entire flock of these that are a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine having a flock like birds that can move through a space that would be very, very small. Lift! <laughs> it could interact with human touch. And it is it is relatively interactive with human touch now, but it's not quite that. It's still experimental. So what is it sensing right now? Well, right now it seems not to be sensing anything. It's just floating in midair. But it, it, it knows when it hits something. It knows when it hits something. How? It knows when it's sitting on the ground. Oh, um, basically it has a capacitive sensor which is hooked up to the the great thing about these balloons is that they're metal so the balloon acts as a giant electrode and the by hooking a capacitive sensor up to the giant electrode the entire balloon in a sense becomes the sensor itself so it can sense touch from especially from people it can sense your touch and respond to it accordingly um, to a lesser extent, it can sense in the same way walls and other grounded objects. A capacitive sensor, it's the same kind of sensing used in like a theremin type of device. 